need to sh uh, use a different uh, device for this. This one's going to be kind of fun. Um, so this is going to involve both of us. So why don't we go ahead and put the camera on the two of us. And I'm going to text Nick, and I'm going to do it like this. Text Nick Landry, what are you doing right now? Sure. I'll text Nick Landry, what are you doing right now? Send it, add more, or try again. Send. All right, sent. There you go. I got it here, but that wait. Just wait. You got a text from Jeremy Foster. Want to read it or ignore it? Read it. The message is, what are you doing right now? Reply, call back, or are you done? Reply. Sure thing. What's your message? I'm actually recording a video with you. Okay. Duh. I'll text Jeremy Foster. I'm actually recording a video with you. Send it, add more, or try again. Send it. Okay, sent. And notice how... And there we go. And you got it too. And the, here's the thing. I didn't touch anything. I just... So I, I use this feature all the time when I'm driving. If I get a text message, then... It kicks in on my Bluetooth. That's the cool thing. If the phone is connected to your car's Bluetooth, then you will hear the audio over the Bluetooth. It's going to use the microphone in your car as well. And I use this feature all the time. I have conversations sometimes with people while driving entirely done over Bluetooth. The whole time, 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> eyes on the road and hands at 10 and 2. And yes, it's, it's fully safe. And it's no worse than having someone sitting next to me, for yeah, example, right. in a passenger seat. Yeah, in fact, it's better because you don't even need to look at anybody. Now, yeah, I, I want to I be explicit here and, and let you know that the reason why Nick's phone started talking right there, even though it's not hooked up to anything, is because we went in and changed the setting. Normally, it's not going to just start talking and reading right. your text message when somebody texts you. That could be dangerous. Yeah, there's, <laughs> that's the cool thing is that everything can be configured in the phone settings where you can say, when do you want to receive text messages like this that are read out loud? And by default, it's only going to do it if you have headphones on or if you're using any kind of Bluetooth device. Yeah. But of course, if you're just walking on the street, the last thing you want, of course, or maybe at, or at the office, yeah. the last thing you want is suddenly for your phone to go like, hey, you, uh, you got a message from Jeremy. And I'm going to read it out loud. Right? I'm going to read it out loud in front of everyone. <laughs> so, no, so there's a feature where you can say for that feature to be always on. Yeah, that's what I enable right now, but normally the default settings is headphones and Bluetooth only. Yeah. There's another uh, communication-related feature that I really like. Show me recent emails from Nick Landry. All right. I'll look for emails from Nick Landry. And there we go. It's brought up, done a search, and shown me the last few emails that, that Nick sent me. And uh, that one is extremely useful because uh, otherwise that's opening an <coughs> app, yep. doing a search, you know, put it, doing a search for a certain name, and there's a lot of typing and stuff involved, and that's just very fast. Exactly, doing a lot of typing. No, it, it's cool. It's very convenient. Yeah. Let's look at some weather-related um, capabilities of Cortana. What's the weather today? The forecast shows cloudy skies with a high of 60 and a low of 41. Okay, so this is what it always looks like in this area of the world, just so you know. <laughs> Not always, but, you know, quite often. Uh, but notice that I asked for the weather today, and Cortana has given me an hourly forecast. I can also say, what's the weather look like this week? The forecast shows there will be a mix of sun and clouds, with highs up to the 60s, except Saturday when there will be rain. There we go. So she's put this into a pretty fluid sentence there. But you can actually do a follow-up. You can just say, for example, like, will I need an umbrella? Will I need an umbrella? The forecast shows there will be a mix of sun and clouds with highs up to the 60s. <laughs> so if you ask for a specific day, for the specific then day. if you ask for a specific day, she will tell you like a yes or no or something like that. So you can ask, actually ask a follow-up question. So if I ask for the weather, for example... Let's try this. In, yeah, go ahead. Will I need an umbrella tomorrow? I'm not entirely certain. <laughs> Here's the forecast for tomorrow. So at 30%, she's not entirely certain. That's, that's hedging. That's exactly. It's like <laughs> <laughs> she's good about predictions, but she's also hedging her bets as well. What's the weather like in New Jersey? 
See, I changed that up on it. There we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah. This is where you want to be in this part of the world. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool right now over there. Actually, well, it's not too bad. I'm Canadian, so <laughs> this is actually mild weather. I mean, 36 is beach weather for us, you know? <laughs> All right, let's look at some driving directions. These ones are fun. Where am I? Most likely, you're at 16661 Northeast 72nd Way in Redmond. Interesting. So she knows right where I am. That's, right. that's logical. How about this? How far is it to Denver? It'll take 20 hours and oh, 52 wow. minutes to drive to Denver. It's about 1,318 miles away. It'd be great if she could then say, would you want me to book you a flight instead? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I recommend that you fly. Just for, just for fun, we should try uh, New Jersey. How far is it to New Jersey? What's your guess? How many miles to New Jersey? Uh, 2,500. Okay. It'll take 44 oh, hours and 7 minutes to drive to New Jersey. It's about 2,802 miles away. All right. Get me driving directions home. Getting you directions to 1478 oh, wow. <laughs> Street. Okay, so obviously Cortana is capable of looking at places and translating those places into real places. Right. And, you know, so she can learn where you work and where you live and, and all of these things. And that's really helpful. Um, how about uh, this one? Oops, let's, let's say, where's the nearest Taco Bell? Here are five locations for Taco Bell near you. All right, now this is nice. This one contains a, the ability to do a follow-on question, and that is, get me driving directions to the second one. Sure thing. And Cortana has that context, and she's able, she knows which one was the second result, and so she's going right. to get me driving directions directly to it. Let's try this one. You want to put it on screen? Find coffee. That's an important one. Here are ten coffee shops. Okay, so there's ten coffee shops. Including three Starbucks. Which <laughs> ones have five stars? Here are the ones that have five stars. Excellent. Ah, there you Excellent. go. That's really helpful, right? Two sentences that I uttered, and all of a sudden I'm looking at just the good coffee shops around me. So some really good scenarios there. You know, this is, in all fairness, it's funny because for anyone who's ever watched some of our keynotes talking about Cortana, Joe Belfiore always refers to Cortana demos as high-risk demos. Yeah. We're, we're doing, this is an entire day of high-risk <laughs> high risk demos. demos. That's right. Because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> That's right. Okay, now I want to show you some calendar-related um, scenarios. And the first one is kind of robotic syntax that it works, but you, know, you might expect that, um, that this is the way a computer would have to hear things. New appointment, 3 o'clock, dentist. Sure. I can add dentist to Now, I don't calendar. actually need to go to the dentist that day, but, um, but you also can use real natural um, language, like make me a new dentist appointment for tomorrow at 3 o'clock. All right. Add dentist appointment to your calendar for tomorrow at wow. 3 p.m. Now, notice that, that uh, right? I, I pushed the button a little bit early, and she actually got a little bit of the other stuff that I was speaking, and she was smart yeah, enough to kind of crop that off. she even got a language off. like make me a new. Wow, this yeah. is... She's good. Yeah, she's good. She's, she's good. very good. She knows when you're just babbling around. And what do I have next? I C F W. Well, there we go. There's an event I've got on my calendar. That's what's coming up next. How about this one? What am I doing this weekend? Let me check on your weekend on Saturday. Prep for motor home. There we go. I guess I need to do something for Valentine's Day. That would be a good idea. <laughs> okay, let's look at some more scenarios. How about events and reminders? When I leave work, remind me to stop at the gas station. Sure. I'll remind you to stop at the gas station when you leave Microsoft Lincoln Square. Okay, now this is one of my favorite scenarios because I actually really depend on it. This is not a, a reminder that's based on... Uh, on time or, or people or whatever. It's based on a location. And when I'm at work, I don't want to think about 
um, you know, trying to stick a sticky note on my steering wheel or something like that to remember that I need to get gas. So I can just say, when I leave work, then remind me of this. Yep. And if it's not at the exact right time, like obviously it's gonna be like right when I drive away from work, if I need a reminder again, I just hit snooze for five or 10 minutes and it's gonna pop up when I need that reminder. So that one's really helpful for me. Uh, let me, the next one is obvious follow on, so I'll skip that one. Um, you can also do person-based reminders. The next time Nick Landry calls, tell him how much better the left coast is. <laughs> so she got that whole sentence, and it was pretty long. Little extra word in there. All right, there we go. Or try again. Oh, now she actually uh, heard me wrong there. She thought that I was trying to send a message to him. She heard next as text. Oh, okay. But what would actually happen there, and we won't take the time to do the full scenario, is when I set up a reminder based on Nick Landry calling me, then the next time he dials me, his avatar pops up on my screen, but I also get a little message that says, hey, remember to, re uh, to tell him how much better the left coast is. And the cool thing with reminders is that reminders can also be based on uh, geolocation. So this is a technique called geofencing. Yeah, where and that's you, what we use for the first and second one. Exactly. Right? Yeah, so leaving work. And. Ge so she knows if you left work or if you get close to something. So for example, I was demoing this technology once at a code camp, and I, was, I knew that at home we didn't have any mayo, so I had to go buy mayo. So I said, just remind me, next time I go to a grocery store, remind me to buy some mayo. And then she looked around, said, do you want this grocery store? I said, yes, because she actually looks around for grocery stores. I select one, and then she creates this geofence, which is this virtual bubble around the grocery store. And I kid you not, we went on vacation in Florida. Two weeks later, I'm driving around. I drive to the grocery store. I walk in, Cortana pops, buy some mayo. And it's just perfect. It was great, it's and I had perfect. completely forgotten yeah. about it. That was two oh, weeks yeah. before. Oh, yeah. That was great. Yeah. Really good um, alarm management. Um, I like to say, wake me up in a certain duration of time. So like, wake me up in 25 minutes. But you can also say, wake me up at six o'clock in the morning. I mean, you know, just the obvious scenarios work great. And you can also take notes, which is an extremely helpful uh, one. You say, take a note, and it, it opens the uh, OneNote experience and allows you to take a note. The nice thing is, it, um, it translates your note, it recognizes it and translates it to speech, but it also gives you the original audio recording that right. you took a note of, so very helpful. Okay, we're uh, trying to manage my slides here. Let's look at a little bit of trivia. Let's see what she knows. How tall is the Space Needle? We're in Seattle after all. She's taking some time on this one. I wonder if I... I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. Ah, high-risk demos. Yeah, high-risk demos. Let's try again. How tall is the Space Needle? Looks like you might have mm, lost may have connection. lost the internet connection. The, uh, this is the experience that you get whenever you don't have a, an Sorry, internet connection because in the cloud, she's kind of trying to figure this out. So Maybe you just try just, it with the other phone. Yeah. Make sure we have... Uh, Good connectivity. There we go. Because there, there is some speech recognition you can actually do when you're offline, and that's something we're going to explore in Module 4 uh, using custom grammars, programmatic lists. But when it comes to general dictation and looking up for information in the cloud, of course you need an inter internet connection for this, and that's why Cortana is not able to work offline in scenarios like this one. So. Yeah, and you know, what I just did um, while Nick was talking, I didn't want to interrupt him by trying to tell Cortana I want to say something to her. So if you look at my phone now, I've actually just typed the same exact sentence. And Cortana's smart enough to, to recognize that I typed well, you've it. you've got a typo now. <laughs> How real. How oh. real. It's very real. It's oh, there. It's, it's extremely real. That's her answer to that. How tall is this Space Needle? Um, because I'm submitting this as a query that I've typed, she comes back with the correct answer, but she doesn't say it out right. loud. Very helpful, so I can still use Cortana in a meeting. So remember that Cortana, in a way, she's your assistant, and she, she's basically using Bing. Yeah. So just like you would be able to, to type for a search in Bing, it, it doesn't mean you always want to talk. If you, if you talk to her, she'll talk back. If you don't talk to her, she'll stay quiet. Yeah, yeah. Let's try another one. How far is it to the moon? 238,854.98 miles. Wow. That is very specific. Impressive. Let's try one more. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? <laughs> what do you mean? An African or European swallow? <laughs> wow. Isn't that tremendous? 
See, she knows things. There are some good sports scenarios, sad ones. Who won the Super Bowl? She heard sad ones. Let's try again. Who won the Super Bowl? Seattle Seahawks. What? That's from last year, probably. Okay. Well, that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think she watched the last two minutes of the game. <laughs> That's, that's actually phenomenal. I'm going to have to take a screen capture of that. <laughs> uh, notice, notice that just it's below... It's wishful she, thinking. Yeah. Here. Notice that just below she does have the, uh, the, the actual score. That, well, that makes me happy. I'm just going to I'm just going to go into a right. bubble here and pretend... Because the funny thing is that you could ask her who will win the Super Bowl before, yeah, and, and she, she didn't properly predict that the Patriots yeah. would win. Yeah, by a small margin. By a small margin. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. You can also do some more general things. Show me the latest NFL scores. So this is going to be a, more of a visual interface. That'd be pretty annoying to try to listen Read to all of yeah. that. So yeah, some good sports scenarios, some good math and conversion, some complex ones like 42% of 142 divided by three. 19.88. Wow, that's impressive. So <laughs> if you're trying to calculate a tip, just ask. Yeah, for a group of 12 people Absolutely. and everything when two people didn't have wine. Yeah, that's so. right. Yeah, yeah minus. <laughs> Let's try this one since you're from Canada. What is minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? Minus 40 Celsius. Ah, that's yeah. where the two converge. The answer is it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> Even for a Canadian, 